Hi everybody, welcome back. Let's have a look at an example of finding an inverse Laplace transform using completion of the square. So remember that when we find the inverse Laplace transform, we are wanting to go from the frequency or the S domain into your time domain. So here we have a function that is in terms of S, which means that we are in our frequency domain. We want to find the inverse Laplace transform of this, which means that the answer we have at the end is going to be in terms of P. Now, we always need to have a strategy when we're trying to do this. And what we're going to do is we start at the denominator. And what we're going to try and do is look for the form of this denominator and compare it to the forms on the table that we've got. And the table that we're using is this table here, right? So you will see from the table we are moving from f of s to f of t. Now this page is not so clear, so what I've done is I've just drawn it up myself to make it clearer. So we're going to be moving from where s is your variable to where t is your variable. So if you look at the denominator, you want to compare the denominator in the example to the denominator that you have on your table. So I only wrote down from number 9 to number 12 on this, which is what's on my table. Your table might look a little different. Okay, so if we look at the denominator, you see what you've got here is you've got a trinomial. And if you compare this form to what is on your table, you'll find that nowhere do you have a trinomial in a denominator of, a, of f of s. Uh, remember that this notation here is just the same as f of s as well. So if you have the trinomial and it's not the same as the form on the table, then what you want to do is see if you can factorize so you can convert from this form into something that is on your table. This you cannot factorize and you know because of the 13 in the third term. That's a prime number. So the only factors it has is one and itself. So you can't prime factorize this. So the way we're going to work with this is we are going to use completion of the square. Now, completion of the square looks like this. If you have a trinomial of this form here, that can be changed into this form here using this formula. Okay, so we're going to do it here with this denominator. So we're going to say that that's going to be equal to 3 over, we've got a bracket here, squared, plus 13, there's an S. In here we've got plus what B is, and B is minus 4. So I'm just going to put it in a bracket like that. It's a bit small but I'll sort it out in the next line, over 2. And then here we're going to have minus, and b in this case is minus 4 over 2, and I'm going to square everything, right? So let me just neaten that up a bit. So we have, that's going to be equal to 3 over... So we have 3 over s, so that's going to be minus 2 squared plus 13. This is going to be, uh, it's minus 2 squared, which means it's going to be 4. So that will be minus 4, 3 over s minus 2 squared, and that becomes plus 9, right? So now if we look at the form of the denominator that we've got, we've got two terms, right? And that is the same as these denominators here, right? So each of the denominators has two terms. And you'll see it also has where the first term is a bracket squared and the second term is just a number, right? 
So you see you've got four options here. Now what is very important is that you must have your denominator match exactly. And that includes the signs that you've got here. Right? So if we look at the denominator that we've got, you'll see you've got your two terms and here you have a plus sign. Right? So this sign is important. So where you have a plus sign, that means we narrow it down to this number 9 or number 10. So you've got a plus sign there and a plus sign there. Right? Then, once you've got your denominator, you move to your numerator. Okay? So in this case here, we have, for number 9, you have a numerator where it's just a number. For number 10, you would have two terms in your numerator. So obviously, this is going to be number 9 because you have a number. Okay? Now, the next thing that's important is that that numerator has to match with the second term in your denominator. So let's see what we've got. So in our denominator, we can rewrite that as 3 over s minus 2 squared this term has to be a square and that is the same as 3 squared right so that numerator has to match with this one here and it does which means that you have your function in the form exactly as on the table so let's compare we have denominator where you have a square your first term, right? Your second term is also in the form of a square and the numerator and the second term in your denominator has to match. Yeah, so we've got a 3 there and we have a 3 there, which means we are now ready to move from f of s to f of t. Yeah, so that means our f of t is going to be we have an e, so we'll have an e, right? Your power has to be bt, so that b is what is in this bracket squared. So b in this case is going to be 2. So it means it's going to be 2t. Then we've got sine. A in this case, it's what is in your numerator that matches with the second term in your denominator. So it's going to be 3t, right? And that's the end of it. So you see your final answer you're going to have in terms of t. So there are no s's here at all, which means you've moved from where your variable is s in your frequency domain into your time domain. So just to recap, we had a function in our frequency domain in terms of s. We converted using the completion of the square method in the denominator and made sure that our denominator and numerator were in the same form as on our table before applying the inverse transform. I hope that was helpful. I'll see you next time. Bye!